I have talked about Kubernetes pod operator, I think two times in my previous videos, uh, which I'm going to refer them in upcoming slides. But in this video, we are going to deep dive in Kubernetes pod operator. So this video will be split into two parts. In the first one, we're going to look at what they are and what advantages they have and when and where to use them. And what is the difference between uh, Kubernetes executor and Kubernetes pod operators, as a lot of people get confused in them. Uh, we are going to look at how you can share the variables as well as the context like DAG execution and task execution run times within the Docker image running inside your Kubernetes pod operator. Whereas in the second part, we are going to write the DAG code and implement everything that we have discussed in this theoretical video by adding few tasks which uses Kubernetes pod operators and we'll deploy it in our Kubernetes cluster that uses Airflow configured with Kubernetes executors. So let's get started. A Kubernetes pod is the smallest deployable unit in which you can run container or multiple containers within your Kubernetes cluster. It's defined by YAML definition. The simplest one would look something like this, where you can have list of containers, each referring to an image, and then you can attach like multiple configurations with it, like which port, commands, arguments, network configurations, etc. You can get more information on this from the official Kubernetes documentations, link below. Kubernetes pod operator is the type of Airflow operator that lets you run a pod in a Kubernetes cluster as part of your DAG task. This means that if you have any Docker image, this operator is going to let you run that image as part of the DAG task as a separate pod in Kubernetes cluster. Kubernetes pod operator will not work if your Airflow is not configured with Kubernetes executor. And Kubernetes executor only works when your Airflow is running in Kubernetes cluster. So if you want to use Kubernetes pod operator, you have to make sure that your Airflow is configured with Kubernetes executor, as well as the Airflow is running within the Kubernetes cluster. I have dedicated videos on Airflow Kubernetes executor defining the overall architecture of how this executor works under the hood. So if you have missed it, check out the link at the top right corner. As well as I also have a dedicated video on setting up Apache Airflow with Kubernetes Executor on a multi-node Kubernetes cluster. So if you have missed it, the link is again in the top right corner. Before jumping into the details of Kubernetes pod operator, let me clear a confusion people often have between these two terms, uh, Kubernetes Executor and Kubernetes pod operator. They both serve different purpose. The only thing they have in common is the term called this Kubernetes. Uh, this is the core cause of the confusion, uh, asking questions like, how are they both different in terms of the actions they perform within the airflow? So one is the form of executor, whereas the other is the form of operator. Now, as an airflow user, you should have a clear understanding on uh, the difference between executors and operators. An airflow operator is a Python class that contains the logic to do work. So for example, if you decide to perform a business logic in Python code, you may use Python operator. Whereas if your business logic can be fulfilled using a bash script, you may use bash operator. Similarly, if you have a SQL script that fulfills your business logic and it needs to run on Snowflake, you can use Snowflake operator. And similarly, if you have a Docker image that contains the logic that fulfills your business operations, you can use Kubernetes pod operator. So when you are initializing an operator, this Python class, you are actually creating a task within a DAG so that when Airflow runs this task for you, it's called a task instance. Whereas an executor is a mechanism by which task instance get run. We have sequential executor, celery executor, Kubernetes executor, and there are a bunch of more. Again, if you want to know the details and in depth of how these executors work under the hood, you can watch my previous Airflow architecture video where I'm focusing on the difference between these executors. Link is in the top right corner. Now, if you're still confused on how practically these both are different, wait till I explain in details about these with a practical example in my next slides. So let's move on. Suppose you have a DAG called Game Feeds Ingestion containing two tasks, ingest data one, ingest data two. Note that they don't have any dependencies. That means they both can run in parallel. So suppose both of these tasks are ingesting data from different hosts. In our example, if we decide to use Python operator, the task code would look something like this. We initialize an instance of Python operator. 
giving it the Python function that needs to be called with the required arguments as uh, whatever you want to call them. Like in this case, we are giving a host IP address from where the data needs to be adjusted. Now let's suppose we have configured our Airflow to use sequential executor. So in this case, how scheduler is going to run your DAG is it will trigger each of the tasks one by one since it's a sequential executor. This Python function called run ingest of task ingest data one is going to be scheduled first. And when it finishes, the scheduler schedules ingest data two. Similarly, let's take an example of a Python operator, but this time we use Kubernetes executor. We have same DAG, we have same Python operator code in both of the tasks. We set the core executor as Kubernetes executor. And in this case, the scheduler is going to dynamically spin up two pods for us. And inside each pod, our run ingest function is going to run as part of the Python operator. Note that Kubernetes executor is going to allow us to run both of these tasks in parallel. Now moving on to our core example using Kubernetes pod operator with Kubernetes executor. Same DAG, but this time the operator code will be a class instance of Kubernetes pod operator. We provide the image, we provide the required Rs, we give the name, task ID and DAG. We use same Kubernetes executor, but this time what happens is a scheduler is going to dynamically spin up pods exactly in the same way as it did before. Now from here onwards, the Kubernetes pod operator task is going to spin up another pod from the given pod and run the given Docker image within that pod. In this case, the pods you see in the blue are spawned by a Kubernetes executor as it was done on previous example, whereas the pod you see in red are spawned by a Kubernetes pod operator. The blue pods are often called as watcher pods because each of this watcher pod is responsible for monitoring the health and status of its child pod so that it can update the status of the tasks, whether it succeeded or failed or up for retry, etc. Here you may be wondering and asking question like, what is the need of running another pod to fulfill the business logic? That is actually a good question. There are several reasons of why you may need to do this. To support my reasoning, you have to understand the difference between the workflow management and the workflow execution. So everything you see on the left side is a workflow management. That's all managed and handled by the Airflow, like responsible for making sure the DAG and the tasks are run on their given schedule. They are ready to be triggered in case if they fail or they are up for retry and all those sorts of things, etc. Whereas on the right side, we call this as workflow execution, where we solely run the business logic and nothing else. Since these worker pods are running an image and the business logic contains inside that image, so we have an advantage of uh, creating an isolated dependencies required just for that specific business logic. And also you're not bound on using Python anymore. The business logic that you write within this image can be written in any of your favorite programming language. Another difference between these workflow management and workflow execution is that in workflow management, you have the visibility of the Airflow environment. For example, you can access the configurations of Airflow. You, you can access the details of the running task instance. You can access the connections defined in your Airflow environment, etc. Whereas in workflow execution, you have no information about Airflow environment at all. Especially let's say from this image, game feeds ingestion image, you have no information about the DAG or task context information like its execution date and time, etc. And by context, what I mean is this Airflow context that contains loads of information regarding the running task instance. So if you check out these context variables, you will get like the details about uh, the DAG run logic date in different formats. You can get the task instance details. You can get the DAG parameters, uh, Airflow configurations and bunch of other stuff. So you don't have any of such information in there. And by now, of course, it's clear that there is no link with the business logic in the workflow management because in the watcher pods or even within the scheduler, you have no information about what is happening inside this Docker image called game feeds ingestion. I have a separate video on explaining the advantages of using Kubernetes pod operator and how they can fix your Python dependencies issues. If you are interested to watch that, the link is in the top right corner. So moving on. Now, the next question people usually ask is that if 
these both environments do not share any context information between each other, then how are we going to pass information like uh, task instance, execution date, and all such information uh, that Airflow has to the image running in the worker pod? We have several options of achieving that. So the first one would be as simple as passing the context via an image arg. So when you define a Kubernetes pod operator instance, in your arguments, you can say ingestion date, and then because this is templated, so you can use all the context information while initializing your pod operator. So in this case, this DS refers to the DAG runs logical date as year, month, and date. Similarly, you can pass uh, other types of variables uh, using environment variables, as an example shown below. But these are like small sized variables. What happens if you want to pass like a big SQL query? Well, guess what? You can do that as well. Because remember, both of these spaces share one thing, which is Kubernetes cluster. So you can take advantage of the resources provided in your Kubernetes cluster to pass the information between the watcher and the worker pod. As an example, in this case, we have defined a config map in our Kubernetes cluster named as my configs, where let's say you have written a bunch of SQL scripts or any other like giant jumbo file that you need to pass into this uh, image, right? While initializing the pod operator, you can say in env from and then pass in the config map information. We are going to see all of this in action once we start writing the code. So this is going to get more clear once we do that. And similarly, there are a bunch of other options in which you can share the information between these watcher and worker pod. One of which is you can utilize Kubernetes volume mounts. Also, you can access the Kubernetes secrets to pass uh, secret information to your worker pod. So that is enough of three. I wasn't expecting this to be too long. So that's why I've decided to split this video into two parts. In the next part, we are going to focus on writing the DAG code that uses Kubernetes pod operators and we're gonna make sense of everything that we have discussed in this theoretical part. So till then, stay tuned. I will see you in the next one. Take care, bye.